just about eight months ago, Pegasus made a very disingenuous video on the TikTok data hearing. I happened to watch him recently because of the two TikTok videos he made, and one of them that I'm about to show you only is extremely biased because he's been showing one side instead of the other. Fight before U.S. Congress. Essentially, he got grilled about TikTok's privacy issues. Basically, the members of Congress are saying that TikTok is a national security threat, and we don't believe our data is safe. Now, the TikTok CEO is saying that actually, all U.S. data is protected, and any data that we happen to have collected beforehand, we will be deleting in the next year. So let's start with a member of Congress presenting their case against TikTok, and then we'll look at his defense. TikTok collects nearly every data point imaginable from people's location to what they type and copy who they talk to biometric data and more even if they've never been on tiktok your trackers are embedded in sites across the web tiktok surveils us all and the chinese communist party is able to use this as a tool to manipulate america as a whole tiktok has repeatedly chosen the path for more control more surveillance and more manipulation. Your platform should be banned. Okay, so they're starting off with a pretty strong stance saying the TikTok should be completely banned with no exceptions. Apparently, it tracks everything about you, even saying that it tracks you when you're not even using the app. Apparently, it tracks you just by being installed on your phone. So fucking what? This is the same excuse that everyone else made about other social media platforms. And those don't get banned, so why should TikTok? Now, that's obviously pretty scary stuff, and I understand why they're pretty upset. But let's take a look at TikTok CEO's response. Now, there's still some work to do. We have legacy US data sitting in our servers in Virginia and in Singapore. We're deleting those, and we expect that to be complete this year. When that is done, all protected US data will be under the protection of US law and under the control of the US-led security team. This eliminates the concern that some of you have shared with me that TikTok user data can be subject to Chinese law. We will also provide unprecedented transparency, TikTok app, and recommendation engine. Third-party validators like Oracle and others will review and validate our source code and algorithms. This will help ensure the integrity of the code that powers what Americans see on our app. Okay, so you started off with the point that they're going to erase all the legacy data that they've actually collected before. Now, that's not a very strong point because how can you ever confirm that that data has been completely deleted? Because even if you delete the original version, you could have made millions of copies and sent it all around the world. So the fact that they have that data in the first place is a pretty hard thing Thing to counter. Now I will because it only takes one year to delete your data, stupid. Now, I will say that this is a huge step up from the previous video we covered where he was speaking in the sort of robot voice faking his emotions. This seems much more like genuine or, you know, presentable like a CEO. Now, that part where he talks about unprecedented transparency, I think he means more transparency than other companies, maybe like Facebook or something. Now, I'm not familiar with like Oracle or any of these other third party companies that he's talking about, but I don't really think anyone stays third party for long, especially in these kind of situations, but uh, he probably knows more about it than I do, obviously. Now, this next part is where it gets absolutely down and dirty. Here we have this tweet. TikTok spied on American journalists. Can you say with 100% certainty that neither ByteDance nor TikTok employees can target other Americans with similar surveillance? TikTok CEO, I disagree with the characterization that it was spying. That's right. I was just playing peekaboo, guys. I previously referenced TikTok spied on American journalists. Can you say with 100% certainty that neither ByteDance nor TikTok employees can target other Americans with similar surveillance techniques? Chair Rogers, I first of all disagree with the characterization that is spying. Um, it was an internal investigation. Yes or no? Can you do surveillance of other Americans? If TikTok were to spy on me, which they don't, then the same goes for other social media companies and you don't punish them. So why ask that stupid question? We will protect the U.S. user data, buy it all from all unwanted foreign access. It's a commitment that we've given to the committee. So, so I guess my question is, are, can you, I want you to, I wanted to hear you say with 100% certainty 
that neither ByteNest nor TikTok employees can target other Americans with similar surveillance techniques as you did with the journalist. Again, I, I don't disagree with the characterization, characterization in surveillance, and we have given our commitments, Chair Rogers. The four commitments, I think it's our commitment that we will not be influenced by any government. On these issues. Okay, I will say that is not a good response, okay? This is definitely a Bush, I'm not spying on you response. The response should be that I guarantee with 100% certainty that your data is safe and I'm not spying on American journalists anymore. When, when Oh, cut the guy a fucking break, Pegasus. Do you really think that English is his first language? It's not. It's normal for a foreigner to mess up because they're not native English speakers. So I really wouldn't blame Mr. Shu for that. When, when you respond like that, it just looks really suspicious. Now, TikTok CEO is trending on Twitter and people are cooking this man. Now, I don't really blame them, honestly. I feel like some of the practices on here are extremely shady. So now he addresses some of the privacy concerns and says that we're building a firewall that apparently protects all your data. ByteDance is not owned or controlled by the Chinese government. It's a private company. 60% of the company is owned by global institutional investors. 20% is owned by the founder and 20% owned by employees around the world. ByteDance has five board members, three of them are American. Now, TikTok itself is not available in mainland China. We're headquartered in Los Angeles and in Singapore, and we have 7,000 employees in the US today. Still, we have heard important concerns about the potential for unwanted foreign access to US data and potential manipulation of the TikTok US ecosystem. Our approach has never been to dismiss or trivialize any of these concerns. We have addressed them with real action. Now that's what we've been doing for the last two years, building what amounts to a firewall that seals off protected US user data from unauthorized foreign access. The bottom line is this, American data stored on American soil by an American company overseen by American personnel. We call this initiative Project Texas, that's where Oracle is headquartered. Today, US TikTok data is stored by default in Oracle servers. Only vetted personnel operating in a new company called TikTok US Data Security can control access to this data. Now, additionally, we have plans for this company to report to an independent American board with strong security credentials. Okay, so now he's presenting a pretty decent case. He's basically saying that all the data that we collect now is going to be vetted by U.S. professionals in America, you know, location in America, and supervised by Americans. So how could we possibly use that data for bad? Now, I will like to point out that you can be American and still not have America's uh, best in mind. That's a pretty common thing, actually. But um, this was supposedly supposed to alleviate the concerns that TikTok's data is being sent to China. People are still saying that it's a Chinese app, so you don't really know what's going on there, and people might say one thing and do another. People are also criticizing the fact that they still haven't admitted that they were actually spying on people before, so it comes off as disingenuous. Now, so because our government, most likely Republicans, are the ones who are most likely not being honest with us and not actually showing us the actual evidence showing that it does. If our US government actually really did find some damning evidence, then they should have showed the American people the evidence that ByteDance really did steal our data, but they don't. Now, somebody brought up a pretty decent point here that this is just fair game. Because if you go and look at China, every single US app is banned there, including but not limited to Google, YouTube, Facebook, Wikipedia, Netflix, Zoom, Instagram, WhatsApp, Twitch, Spotify, LinkedIn, Skype, Pinterest, Tumblr, and Discord, and nearly all news sites are all banned in China. So, is it fair game for US to ban TikTok? No. It's not fair game at all. This is the United States of America, not China. Because if the United States of America bans TikTok, it would be a government overreach. And we do not want that. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so now it gets even more dicey. One of the members of Congress actually asked him, can you assure us that no members of ByteDance helped you in preparation for this interview? And the response is sus. Can you guarantee that no one at ByteDance had a role in preparing you for today's hearing? 
like I said, Congressman, this is a high-profile hearing. A lot of people around the world were sending me wishes and unsolicited advice, but I prepared for this hearing with my team here in D.C. Dude, you gotta say no. You gotta be like, no, 100%, nobody helped me. I prepared on this interview. Just me and my team. Like, the unsolicited advice is so sus. You have to be like, hey, I'm not a pawn in some bigger game over here. It's just so imposter, okay? I don't know what's gonna happen at this point. I feel like the future of TikTok hangs in the balance. The answer isn't sus at all. It's pretty decent. Like, I admit, it's not as great as it is, but it's decent. It's better than nothing. Besides, you shouldn't expect people like him to give a perfect answer. They're only humans. Not all humans have the best English-speaking skills. Like, for real. Give the TikTok CEO a break. Meanwhile, I am not the only one who is disgusted by Pegasus disingenuous takes about TikTok. This person who made a comment it is a fan of Pegasus who says this is one of the most BS video you've made and I'm actually a fan. And then another person says, agree, he left out the Congress people being complete idiots plus racists and the city out making very valid points. Then Pegasus says, I didn't see the rest, Lo. I only saw a part of it on Twitter. Yeah, you think it's funny that you didn't see the rest because you didn't look at both sides. That's how irresponsible you are. In fact, you literally shouldn't have laughed over a serious situation where our dumb fuck government officials are going to use the means of government overreach to ban an app that had nothing to do with our data being stolen. All because the Republicans kept saying that TikTok is from China, when we all know that it is originally headquartered in Signal, which is an actual country. And then one person says, every YouTube commentary. This person says, then why cover it to a large audience if you have no idea what's going on? At least learn a topic you're covering. Exactly, Pegasus. You're not even political and you're covering something that's outside of the TikTok drama. You shouldn't be covering it. You, Pegasus, shouldn't be covering something that you have no knowledge of what our evil government officials who are the Republicans are doing. Just because you talk about a lot of stupid TikTokers doesn't mean you should cover a TikTok hearing or any congressional hearing for that matter because you're unfit for this. I watched a bunch of Pegasus videos already and they seem so biased, but especially this one. He took one of the only clips where the CEO was put into bad lighting when the, during the whole trial, the Congress was barely able to counter any of his arguments. During the whole bit, he tried so hard to make the CEO look seem bad. Yep, that's what happens when an uneducated commentary YouTuber knows nothing about politics and our government. On God, bro, like the Congress obviously lacks so much expertise in technology and they seem so uneducated. Like, Pegasus is hella biased here, which is annoying because the Congress was legit accusing the man of doing things about like the solid, solid evidence. I know, right? This kind of biased information is super dangerous, especially if it's given out as facts. Yeah, I agree. At some point, Pegasus, you gotta stop being super biased on something that you don't know that you shouldn't cover in the first place. The way you decided to ignore the only part where TikTok was correct and the Congress was straight up in the wrong, you have an audience. Show them the whole story instead of making it one-sided like other content creators do. Unfortunately to Pegasus, he's too lazy and not man enough to sit through a five-hour hearing. 
I like how you dodged a lady asking him about the Chinese government and how TikTok is banned from government phones. That was hard to watch. Dog, if he answered yes or no, they would take advantage of that. Yeah, exactly, because the Republican Congress people are known for asking very vague questions. It's as simple yes or no, not right. Oh, right. A 500 word essay. Like I said, the yes or no questions are vague. Congress should have done a better job asking better questions. You should have watched a part of the court case where a real US senator asked whether TikTok connects to the internet. That's what I am saying. I knew there's going to be a YouTuber who's just going to edit out the whole thing just to make it TikTok look bad. Exactly. This felt incredibly biased as many of these videos are. It was clear that some US senators had no clue what they were talking about. As a matter of fact, the US Congress of the Republican Party are so out of touch that there's even an article made about it from Wired. I urge you to go read it because it definitely explains how Congress is incapable of asking the right questions when it comes to privacy legislation. Speaking of incapable of asking the right questions, watch this video I have here. Section 230 is a very complex okay, I'm, issue. I'm, you know, yes or no? I, we are very focused on safety and okay, all these I'm, dangerous I'm, I'm challenges are that as move no. when we find them. Mr. Xu gave very accurate, informal answers that we need to hear. And I agree that Section 230 is a complex issue. You just cannot ask someone a yes or no question like that. You... It's devastating to hear about the news of, yes, as a yes, father myself, this is... Sir, tragic. yes or no? Okay. We do take these issues very yeah, seriously. Yeah, yes or no? And we do provide resources for anyone who types in anything that... Sir, is yes or video. no? I see you're not willing to answer the question. How fucking dare Gus Billy Ragnus for trying to be interrupting him when Mr. Show was able to answer the right questions in full depth. And that's the reason why Mr. Show wanted to be transparent, but Gus Billy Ratness wasn't having it. Billy Ratness is a jackass. Uh, Congressman, uh, I would appreciate this. This is a complex uh, topic. Today, all data y is stored yes, by no, default. It's not that complex. I, I Have think... you directed them to change the source code? Like what we are offering and yes my fourth no. commitment. Uh, have you directed them to change that source code? Uh, Congressman, um, if you give me a bit of time to just... No, I, I don't. I, it's a yes or no question. Bill Johnson is also a jackass for not only letting Mr. Show be transparent by answering the question in full depth. He should be ashamed of himself for running this body. China challenges uh, in Cong China. Congressman, I'm really glad you asked this question. Uh, yeah. Do they, yes or no? I'm not sure. Because yeah, whoa, 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 come on now. You're not sure? Yes or no? Billy Carter only wanted a yes or no question because he doesn't want a full in-depth answer. That proves yes or no questions are vague. Yes or no, do you screen against content from nations that commit crimes against humanity? Congressman, I will use this comment. Yes or no? I'll yes or no? Use this comment pre present no, you, any points of views you that don't. you want. Whoever that guy's name was, he most definitely committed crimes against humanity by not letting Mr. Show answer the question in full. Deaf. But only wanted a vague yes or no answer. In principle, uh, it's just a yes or no. In principle, I agree that that kind of practices is not. And can TikTok okay. users opt out of targeted ads? Yes or no? At this moment in time, we believe that this is a very important part of the experience. So yes or no? Time is ticking. It is an important part of the experience. How many fucking politicians do the government that only wanted a vague yes or no answer because they ask a vague yes or no question? And also, why didn't you, Pegasus, criticize our government for that? Why?
agreeing with them on the vague questions that they were asking. And why not hold our government officials accountable for interrupting this show when he was answering them? You couldn't take action after 41 days when a clear threat, a very violent threat to the chairwoman's committee and the members of this committee was posted on your platform. You damn well know you cannot protect the data and security of this committee or the 150 million users of your app because it's an extension of the CCP. And with that, I yield back. Can I respond, Chair? No, we're going to move on. This Cat Kimak Bimbo didn't get the yes or no answer that she wanted because she only wanted vague answers, not a full transparent answer. Now, this video is from a Twitter user named Joy Rack, which says a Singaporean was mistaken for being Chinese multiple times during a U.S. congressional hearing about TikTok. Technologically uninformed Congress members grilled him about Uyghurs and the CCP, despite his repeated attempts to clarify his nationality. Now you want him deported? Khan sounds like a racist family name, to be honest. Putting that aside, the fact that I have the balls to call out some politicians instead of Pegasus is insane. No, Gigasis. What she meant was you don't even need to have it on your phone. Its trackers are embedded in a website, so you don't even need to ever have opened TikTok. The US Congress numbers are so old and out of touch, and there were only a actually good point against TikTok. TikTok might get banned not because of privacy threats, but simply because Congress can't realize that CEO will fix every issue they have with TikTok. To be fair, I don't care how it gets banned, I want it gone. Then delete it or something. I don't know. You want it gone because A, you used to before, or B, you never used it before and you're just talking out of your ass, thinking that you know something that you don't know. And I'll go with the latter, which is that you prefer to have our government do a government overreach. What? This video feels so biased against TikTok. Because it is, and deservedly so. Okay, if you think Pegasus has done a great job making this video by being a one-sided person, then you're wrong. You're so out of touch with reality. You think if someone doesn't use TikTok, then they are the messiah. What side of TikTok are you on? Every platform has a good and bad. I barely find a bad on TikTok. TikTok should be banned from the whole world, not just the US. No one shouldn't because you're out of touch just like our government. Why? Give a valid reason, please. He has no valid reason to give. He just believed this falsified video from Pegasus. Because this guy has the same narrative as our government officials who barely have any factual evidence to prove anything. He then says if you can't see the reasons by yourself, then there's nothing to discuss. You are just what truth. What truth? Because the only truth I know is that our government is out of touch with technology. Countless people became celebrities just because they promoted their town to TikTok because TikTok has a less harsh algorithm than YouTube. And more commenters are just eating it up at this point because they're basically saying you have no reason. If you have a reason, tell us. And then the other one saying, then why are you on YT? Yeah, it's pasty 8458. If you have an actual reason, tell people what it is. If you don't have an actual reason, then don't say it. He's not sus at all. I'm pretty sure he's aware that the court uses manipulation techniques to catch him slipping by asking dumb questions too, like can the app access my Wi-Fi at home? But the whole time, he was near perfect. The app is good for what it is, definitely helped me in numerous cases like keeping me awake in my night shifts or the unsolicited tutorials that came up on my feed. I'm aware my microphone is tracked at times. Not only by TikTok, but other apps and services too. Let's not add that TikTok is the only one tracking everyone. So unless they are gonna ban the internet, they should shut up and fix the real problems of the world. I agree 1000%. Because gun issues is one of the real issues that they should fix. 
this is the only YouTube comment that I've seen with a shred of common sense. YouTube commenters and influencers alike have a seething rage for this app for no apparent reason. Pegasus has become the next. Nick is not green. He's immature, he's ignorant, he ignored all the criticisms that he got from that video. He didn't read all the comments to actually correct himself for nearly a year, whether it be in the comments or that he didn't make a video to correct himself on a mistake he made. Not showing both sides because he didn't watch the whole 5 to 7 hour hearing on YouTube to actually come to the conclusion of this TikTok congressional hearing. Pegasus pushed an agenda to only show one side of this TikTok congressional hearing by only watching clips on Twitter that he blindly agreed with without knowing. He did that only to please other online users who hate to talk while those who liked to talk actually watched the entire to talk hearing and pointed out the major flaws from our government. I'm very disappointed that this self-assured commentary YouTuber has become egotistical because Pegasus attacked the TikTok CEO's own character by falsely claiming he's sus, and better yet, Pegasus wasn't being sympathetic towards him, but he was more sympathetic towards our out-of-touch old hag government politicians by giving them the benefit of a doubt rather than calling them out on their lies. The problem I have with Pegasus right now is that he hasn't done his research. And the matter of fact is that Pegasus is shit at informing people who, when it comes to serious situations, such as that 2023 TikTok congressional hearing. Pegasus, you're very uneducated on this topic and you rushed this video to get your opinion on the video sharing service about actually absorbing all the information to actually better critique the issue with this hearing. Your presentation in that this TikTok court case is wild, is unprepared, willfully biased, and one-sided. Had you taken the time to watch the entire congressional hearing, then you wouldn't be misinforming your audience. Also, the congressional hearing is not a court. It's a meeting of a congressional committee to gather information and opinions unproposed legislation. Moreover, stop making lazy half-assed rushed commentary and do better to present your arguments.